Hi, everyone. Uh, we'll get started in a few minutes. Just want to give you a heads up. There's uh, some resources in the chat uh, that we'll be using today. Um, you don't have to download everything. I'm going to do a lot of kind of just typing it out and um, you just go from there. So we'll probably get started in uh, maybe about two minutes or so. So out of curiosity, um, can you use the, the emoticon icons like thumbs up uh, if you use WTEC or Overleaf, thumbs down if you don't. Uh, I just like to get a sense of where everyone is. Okay. That's perfect. Okay, this is an intro one, so I'm I'm not expecting you all to, to know how to do this stuff. Um, so this is great. Good. Awesome. Um, let me go ahead and put this person in. And let me go ahead and just paste these resources in there again in a second. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of links in the chat. You don't have to use all of them. The important one is going to be the um the link to Overleaf itself. So if you want to follow along and go through this as well, most definitely can. I'm gonna do this without uh, having to like download a lot of stuff. So I did a lot of typing. I'm gonna show you how to download and import style guides and, and templates into the system. So there's really no need to have to download each and everything from the Google Drive. But if you want to, you can. There's the links to it. There's also my outline that I have that I'm gonna be using today, roughly. Uh, so my plan is we're gonna go ahead and look person in. Let me just put the, the links in here again. So uh, my plan is I'm going to walk through how to, from start to finish, first thing is like, well, what is LaTeX, what is Overleaf? We're going to go through some of the basics within that, how to import some templates, how to use those as a quick demo of how to write with it. And then we're going to go switch gears to the AU thesis and dissertation template. I'll give you a quick some instructions and some walkthroughs of like how to use that to get you up and run with it. And then gonna show you some other types of templates. And then towards the end, my plan is we're gonna open up the resource guide and try a couple of different things. Um, that way there's some more advanced features and some other stuff we can try doing to make it easier too. Uh, full disclosure, I am not a LaTeX user. I am not an Overleaf user. Um, I, don't, I don't use these programs personally uh, when I write. Um, I mostly do everything with an R, and I use LaTeX with an R personally. Uh, so I just want to mention that uh, I don't use Overleaf. Uh, so we're going to be using the unpaid or the free version of Overleaf. I do want to mention AU does not have a university license for Overleaf. Um, C2L is not able to purchase that. Uh, so I want to mention that just from the get-go. I've received a bunch of emails over the past uh, couple weeks about it. Unfortunately, I don't have any other information other than, no, we don't have a license. Um, if you are trying to use GitHub, I mean, that is a paid feature of the system or the program. Um, what I would probably do is I would just use uh, GitHub and then just share the LaTeX files personally. There's some other workarounds too you could potentially use. Uh, so on my screen right now, you've probably seen uh, just the Google Drive, and that's going to be that first link. And this has all the resources, everything in there. And a couple of things I'm going to show you too within this. So once we have a project already created and we're pretty satisfied with it, I'll show you how to download that and use um, what's called MyKetex. And that's a local installation of LaTeX that's completely free. And then that way you can do stuff offline. The benefit of that is sometimes there's issues with overly and trying to connect to it. Sometimes the system's down. I would rather have a local copy saved than have everything I need in a place I can't access. So I'm always of kind of that mindset, always have backup copies. Uh, so the couple of things I want to mention here too, the demo, this is going to be just the files we'll be using today. Again, we're, you don't need to download anything here. We can walk through together. Um, I'm going to show you how to get the other two things 
and download that locally. So you don't have to necessarily download those, but again, I'm walking through step by step. So let me close out of that tab. I have a whole bunch of tabs open, um, but I'm going to go through all together. Uh, so in another browser, uh, this is Overleaf. So when you first connect in, if you don't already have an account, you want to sign up for free. And then it's paying for you to use your ORCID or Google or just use your AU information, whatever you want to do. Um, we do not have a university-wide license, so you're not able to use it as a solo. But I'll just go ahead and create a free account. Um, if you want the paid features to do like uh, more advanced stuff and collaborate, there's a subscription page thing that CTR does not fund, though. So once you're in, I mean, I have some other stuff even previously that I've worked with it. Um, so I want to go ahead and create a new project. So there's a whole bunch of things here. Um, the big thing is going to be new project. And then once we have that, we can add to it. Um, the nice thing is you can have multiple projects. I'm going to go ahead and do a blank project and call this uh, my super awesome article. And what it's done already is went ahead and create a main text file. So this is going to be your main file we're going to work out of. And I'm going to show you how to customize it and make it pretty. Because right now it's it's kind of garbagey. Um, the nice thing with this type of system is, is you don't have to install a whole bunch of stuff. You can kind of use it and it's all plug and play. You can upload stuff locally or that you have locally and you can download stuff. We can compile. So this left side here, this is our LaTeX code. We're going to be writing everything. When we compile, we have a nice little PDF we can download on the right hand side. So what we're going to do first is, this is really, really uh, basic right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and change this to Asian item response theory simulation. That's the work I personally did. Um, so we go ahead, and now that I made that change, I can go ahead and I can recompile. And that makes that an update. The nice thing is it saves automatically as you go. Uh, you can also use Visual Editor. Uh, so this is another way of doing it where you can kind of have some different options and they seem more visual one. It all kind of, it's all personal preference. I'm going to use the code editor for this. That way to kind of show you some different things. So right now, this is pretty basic stuff that we have. We don't have a whole lot of stuff. Um, what we're going to do though first is we're going to add what's called a preamble. Um, so a preamble is going to give you a lot of additional features to this. So we have the graphics, I'm just checking some stuff. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new file and I'm gonna call this workshop. Uh, you don't have to necessarily do this, um, but I wanna show you kind of from the basics because right now we have a blank text file. So if we try to compile, we have a whole lot of nothing. It's just using the previous one there. So, Rather than type all of this out, I'm going to paste it. And this is from the workshop text that's in one of the documents. So I'm just going to paste this here. Then we're going to walk through line by line what it's all doing. Just because there's a lot to type out here. So first thing we have is the document class. So this is letting uh, overly for the tech know what, what type of article it is. It's going to be 12 point font. It's going to be an article format. And then these use packages. These are all additional functionality that we're using within Overly for LaTeX that will then make it easier to work with some stuff. So that way we can have uh, equations, we can have references in there, we can insert an object, we can put a URL in there. We want this all in the preamble. Uh, so we have our URL. It's going to allow us to paste a URL later on. A graphic would upload a picture of the universe in there. Uh, Nat Bib, that's your bibliographies and references. Same thing with hyper reference. Uh, and then we have some math stuff in there too. And I'm putting this uh, set site style here just for APA format. The benefit of this is we can have this with an APA format without having to do that number, like one, two, three, four. It depends on, on what style guide you're using though. Here we have our title, so Bayesian Differential Item Function, the name of the author, and then begin document. So let's go ahead and recompile this. It's gonna be the first chunk of it, the first part. So again, we have a preamble that sets stuff up. Okay, workshop text. So you're gonna get some stuff like this happen every now and then. We'll go ahead and add. And 
and it's trying to find the end dot. There we go. Um, so after this preamble, we're going to start with just the title. So what do you want to call the article? What's going to be on the cover page? Uh, the author, and then begin document. So whenever you begin document, you want to have this, so it's going to be at your starting point. Uh, and then we do this, uh, begin title page. This way it's going to be separate from your abstract, from your main text. So beginning your title, you want to make sure if you have, ever have a beginning, you need to also have an end. So we do begin, make title. That's going to pull in the title and the author information. And that's going to make a title page. And then we're ending that title page. The next thing we have now is we're going to begin an abstract. Well, well this is an abstract. This is going to be accepted without revisions. Famous last words, I would love that, but that's rare. And then we're going to end the abstract. So just to get a sense within this, we always want to kind of, I'd like to do a couple of lines, recompile, do a couple of lines, recompile. Just because like sometimes you'll see within the log, it turns red, like we had beforehand. Um, it happens, it's okay. Uh, but that way we can kind of troubleshoot and see what's going on there. So now that we have this, we also have an abstract here and we can continue on this, but we would want to end. And then if we actually wanted to start our main paper, a good handy thing is new page. That's going to go ahead and this is a test. New page. So it's going to essentially be a page break as if this was a word. So we see this is a test. And now if we write below here, test again. We let it compile. Hey, there's another page. Um, realistically, we wouldn't want to do new page test, new page test, new page test. It's it's not really helpful. Um, but now we have it kind of set up. We have a preamble. And as we go through, like, oh, you know what? I need something else. And then we can always go ahead and update this preamble and add more packages in here, too. Uh, the nice thing with Overleaf, and there's a whole bunch of limitations with Overleaf. Um, just full disclosure, there's a lot of limitations. But the nice thing is you don't have to install anything. And that's a big benefit. You don't have to worry about version control for packages. It's it's pretty good in this respect. Um, if you're doing local stuff, I would actually recommend uh, Mike Text. It's an, a tech editor that you can download for free. The nice thing is you can have it install stuff on the fly. So that way it's not going to have all these error messages and you have to go find the stuff and install it. So it's a quick and easy way uh, to do. So let's go ahead and we'll do some writing and then we're going to go ahead and do some more different features within this. And then I'm going to show you some different guides and some stuff from that. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to add a section. So let's go ahead and do section. Uh, section, I can't spell. This is always fun with uh, with coding live. It's, <laughs> you start making mistakes. And it's like, oh, oh no, oh no. So I'm gonna do um, asterisk and curly bracket and put in introduction. Um, this is the start of my paper. It is a somewhat poorly written as I am doing this live. So let's go ahead and begin compiling it. The nice thing is within the other uh, section for introduction, it will have that header within this. We could also do something like a subsection. And then we can put in all the stuff. And then that will go ahead and have the subdivided out. So if you wanted to do another section where um, more writing, let's write some more. I'm just kind of putting some random stuff in here. I'm going to go ahead and do another section and I'm going to put a conclusion. And now we're not done for the workshop, but just so you can kind of see how this is kind of how this works within this. Um, let's go ahead and do it that way. So now that we have a couple of sections in here, we can add stuff to this. So I'm going to put a whole bunch of text in here. So let's go ahead and under the more writing, let's go ahead and start this up. So 
Now let's start writing the article. And I'm going to do two backslashes here. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, put something else, something in this uh, document. This paragraph contains. So, question why you put a little. So, if you do the asterisk, when show that, it's going to get rid of the other uh, numbering within there. So, if you want to have like subsection with the numbers, you would get rid of the asterisk, and that's going to go ahead and this is the number. So, if you wanted to have a conclusion without that one, we'd want to put a an asterisk there. Great question. That's a quick way you can do that. So, like, I don't really like the little numbering parts because that's not it's not really how I've seen papers done personally within this from my discipline. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put the asterisks in there. Um, just for time, I'm gonna go ahead and put in some and copy paste some stuff, and we're gonna talk through it. Because I mean, you all could kind of start watching me do like typing in random stuff here, but. So what we have here is a bunch of these uh, slashes. And what this is doing, it's going to be, a, we're inserting a line break. The text isn't going to be indented, but there's, we want to do a new line, we do slash new line. So I'm going to go ahead and recompile so that way you can kind of see what the output looks like. And now we can see that here, after this first line, there's no line space here, but we do have an indent. So we could go ahead and do those line breaks, and then that way it's kind of these separate lines. If we wanted to put in like a reference as we're typing, um, so let's say that we're writing about like an R package that we're developing. Um, we want to use a different style guide, but what we can do then is we can also use a slash href curly bracket, and we can actually put in a URL and then another curly bracket, which is essentially going to have like a um the like the um the name of it so that way when you click on it it'll redirect you to the url so it's almost like a hyperlink we can add into that too we can also do things like if we wanted to start doing like a indents we can do set oops slash slash set let's do length and we're gonna do slash par indent and put this as 20 point. Um, there is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe, oops, I'm just going to paste this because we'll be here for a while. Um, I'm a big Douglas Adams fan, so let's go ahead and paste that. It's for in why it's here. It once they disappear in place of something even more bizarre and inexplicable. Uh, there another, or there's another theory that which states this has already happened. So let's go ahead and compile this. So we can kind of see what this looks like. So we can see when we had the par here, we have a new paragraph. It was great. Um, so great question, learn all those commands in the part indent. Um, this is, we go and paste this link. Uh, so this is like the go-to guide. I mean, there's a bunch of guides online for the tech. Um, this is what I used just to go in through it. So it starts from the really basic stuff, which we're going to cover most of these basics. Um, but then we have like aligning equations, how to do italics, underlining, Paragraphs, lists. Um, so this has, if you click on lists, which we'll do in a few minutes, we, we can either use like insert bulleted list using the editor, or we can go ahead and do the example code here. So it gives you examples. We can just copy, paste, and try things. You're not going to break the system. You're not going to break the program. Just try things and see what works. Um, honestly, that's what I did, because again, I'm, I'm not personally a LaTeX user for Overleaf. Um, so just try things and see what happens. If you get error messages, Google search it. Honestly, that's that's what I did with all of this. Um, so if you want to indent, we can also do the 
So I'm going to go ahead and go down to, oh, I don't know what happened with that. That was interesting. Um, so we do slash um, indent. This is an indented line. We can also do, or we, we can start a new paragraph. Which would do, just do the slash part. And then this is an indent. So let's go ahead and recompile that so we can see what's going on. And yeah, so we have indented new lines there too. And we can continue typing and we're in pretty good shape. So I am looking, if anyone's, I'm kind of curious. Let's see what happens here. Nope, nope, nope. I was hoping, I was hoping to put a gift in there. I was really hoping that would have made my day. But alas, no. So we just continue typing, blah, blah, blah. They're taking the hobbits to Flavor, Flavor Town, Flavor Town, to Flavor Town. Um, sorry, I had that image stuck in my head. Um, that's just a weird, weird GIF, but yeah. So we can go ahead and type in. As we're typing, it's going to go ahead and take care of that to the next line. So this is great. This is the basic stuff, but let's go ahead and let's start adding in some bold. So let's say we wanted a bold that they're taking the hobbits to Flavor Town. Um, so what we can do is we do slash and then a text. EF, and I'm going to get rid of the curly bracket here and put this at the end. So that way, when we, we combine it, now we have they're taking the hops to Flavor Town in, in bold. We do page, you can kind of see. So now we have that in bold. Great. Um, And then what we can do if we wanted to then um, create an italic, what we can then do is we do slash a text it, oops. This is true that they are taking the profits to the flavor now. I feel so. This is going to be such a weird video to watch. My apologies to future folks watching this. I'm just kind of um, stream of conscious writing, which is becoming quite horrifying. So my apologies. Um, so this is how we do italics. So we want to make sure within the curly brackets, whatever we want to be italicized, we can also do something like inside this, we can do slash text f, and then we'll put another curly back at the end of this and get rid of this one. So now we have both italic and bolded. So you can actually combine these two. Um, we can also do things like underline. So if we do a slash, slash underline, and then we do this, this is important, dot, dot, dot. And we recompile. So that way we can actually see now we have that information there. Um, you can also use the format here too. This is going to be doing the same thing as we were just typing it out. If we want to do italics, we click here. Same things if we typed it out. Um, I'm showing sure you the, the hard way of doing this, but we also have like normal text. We can change the text. There's a subsection. So we do subparagraph. These are the commands and try some different things within that. And that way you can kind of customize it and have it do what you want it to do. Um, so lists here too. So if you don't want to have to, these are quick ways to go ahead and try things like inserting an image, bullet points and lists, um, mathematical equations. We're going to do the long way, but these are all the different steps you can go about doing this. So let's go ahead and shift gears and do some bullet points and some lists. And then we're going to create a, a table. And then some, so insert some stuff, and then we're going to try some other things too. So, bullet points. Uh, we could, we could go to this little helper thing. 
and now we have um, we get a, a and if we do a slash oops slash item actually get all lined up um, force everyone to learn Bayesian. So if you want to do that, we can use that little helper thing, which works out pretty well. But what we could do instead is we could, let me just paste this in here and then kind of talk through it. It's the same thing. So we have item one, item two. So we just begin the itemization. And then these are just going to be bullet points here. And then we just want to make sure that it ends with it. So where it says item, we we'll just add right afterwards what specifically we want to have within that bullet point. If we wanted to do like a number list, it's going to be really similar. But we're going to use like begin enumerate, and that's going to give you a numbered list instead. So we have item one, get a PhD. Two, four, say we're going to use Bayesian. Three, don't know. Four, take over the world. Now if we run that. Now we go ahead and we would put it like um, this is my plan. So this is my five year plan. Just kidding. I'm not going to force anyone to do Bayesian. So if you want to, by all means, it's awesome. Um, but that's why we could then go ahead and add a, a number list in there. Under this section, we're going to go ahead and now do a subsection or a regular section. We'll just call this um, inserting a table. So what we're going to do for tables is we're going to say, um, this is my table. And then we're going to go ahead and do slash uh, begin and curly bracket, and then it's called table. And then from there, what we're going to do is from the documentation, we do one uh, square brackets, exclamation point, HTB, and square bracket. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a slash end the bracket table just so we have it contained within this. So now within that containment, we're going to go ahead and start typing. So I'm going to do slash begin, curly bracket tabular, and curly bracket, curly bracket. Then we're going to do C space, C space, C space. And now, because we have a beginning and end, I'd like to do this and kind of build it out. This place with me end. Square, or curly bracket tabular. So now we can actually do uh, text one and two and three. Now I'm going to do two slashes and then do slash H line. Get rid of these extra spaces. Oh, why is it not? Okay. Um, and I'm going to do uh, text two, and let's do four, and five, slash, slash. Okay, so um, that's a lot of work to put in a table, but now we can actually see a text. So we have a, a Three rows, or sorry, two rows, three columns. We can go ahead and add that in there. Um, first, going first, getting started, it's easier just to do like insert table, and if we wanted like a three by three, and then we just kind of fill in here as well. So it has all that information here, it has some additional stuff like captions, labels, but it's a really quick way to get started. We just fill in the blanks here. So we'd say this is T one. Four, five, six, seven, eight, question mark, two, T1, 
and then you can go ahead and recompile it. So the same process, uh, it's gonna be much quicker. Oh, there we go. And let's put it as a um, centered one within this too. So we can go ahead and if we get rid of the centering. Let's say we didn't want that. And now we can go ahead and recompile. There we go. So actually it looks better with centering. But that's how we can go ahead and start doing that. Oops, let me go ahead and redo those. So it's kind of the basics for like inserting a table. Um, for images, we haven't inserted anything yet or upload stuff. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and put an image. So on the Google Drive, I downloaded on my local one. And what I do is to upload anything, like if it's a style guide, if it's a visual, if it's something else, what we can do is we click on the upload button here. And I'm going to go ahead and select files. So I'm going to go ahead and go into to here, and this is the demo. I'm going to go ahead and get my universe JPEG. And now we can see this here. It's going to live in there for the whole time. Now, what we can then do is we can go ahead and insert. We want to make sure that if we want to insert any pictures in our preamble, we want to make sure that there's the the graphics X here too. We want to make sure that's in there because if not, then we're going to have an issue because uh, it's going to give an error message. So what we're going to do now is we can either, honestly, the easiest thing, just getting started, click on this, the three dots, insert figure in a from project file, and we can include a caption and change it here. So I'm going to do this way because it's actually going to be much quicker than me typing everything out. But we're going to begin a figure. We're going to make sure we have an end figure. We're going to center it. And I'm going to put this as, you know what? I'm going to put this as three and a half line width. Then we have our JPEG that's going to be referencing. Our caption. This is the universe. That is pretty. Great. Oops. Great. And then if we do that in end figure. Oh, that's way too big. That is way too big. Let's leave it as the default. Great. Um, yeah, so this is how you go ahead and put a, uh, an image in there. So question, if you have an Excel table, is it possible to import it into Overleaf? Um, and table by data. Uh, some great questions. So I'm not sure about the Excel uh, table into Overly, so let me check really quick. So Stata, let's do um Excel table into Overly. Okay, so it looks like you can actually convert it. So I'm gonna go ahead and yeah, so uh, you just go ahead and do the table generator. Looks like paste the table data and then paste without formatting. So definitely possible. Um for statistical team produced for it should be an image. Um, so what you can actually do is I believe there's things like ASDOC or ASDOC. I'm more of an R user personally, and I'm going to show you how to do the tables within R for this. But if you're trying to do a uh, Stata able to overleaf, actually I'll just put this as a tech because that'll be broader. So what you could do, so here you go. So use um, SSC install text save text save using whatever text. And then this will go ahead and it looks like we'll write in information. They can go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and paste this. This is a Stata to a tech guide. Um, doing this on the plus, I haven't been able to go through and verify it. Oh, it's giving me, so it's, it's not happy that it wants me to sign up for this. Um, how to generate. Uh, yeah, so there's going to be, um, I will go through the references towards the end. Um, it, the issue with Zotero is the free version of Overleaf does not allow integration within that, so it's a paid feature. I'm going to show you the manual way to do it, though. Um, so that's going to be a really quick turnaround for that. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that step by step. Um, if we, for Stata to attack, uh, my apologies, uh, the daycare was closed today, so uh, my partner's upstairs with the kids. Uh, so if you hear some background noise, my sincere apologies. 
Um, so what we're going to do now is that's a great questions. I'm going to go ahead and I'll show you some different things within that and then how to do the references. Um, we're going to go ahead and first we're going to do some things with equations though. Um, so for math, as well as uh, just some quick things to do within that. Then we're going to go ahead and do um, how to import some stuff within R and then references. That's the game plan. So for math, let's go ahead and I'm going to do a new section. section. I'm going to call this math. And then what we're going to do now is I'm going to do dollar sign y equals mx plus b and dollar sign. And this is just going to be a really basic equation, y equals mx plus b. And let's see. So here it is. So it's going to go ahead and put it within this. I kind of zoomed in a little bit so you could see within this. We could also do things. So if we want to do a little bit more advanced with more math, let me go ahead and do a, another section. So I'm going to do this as an equation. So right here, it just has an embedded one. So we can do as a begin equation. Then we're going to put a label for pi, 3.1, 3.1456, then end equation. And then we can kind of see there, this is a better approach, especially if you're doing a lot of equations, especially for a journal article, you would want the equations to be numbered. So you'd want to use the equation equation. The quick math here, what's the dollar sign in it? It's just going to embed it within text. We don't see an equation number. So it really depends on what you're trying to do. We could also do things like, I keep on doing that. I'm just going to button mash a little bit and then put a dollar sign pi equals 3.145. And then we do an n dollar sign there. So that way when we have this, it's going to be in text. So we could do that. If we wanted to throw some Bayesian at it, um, what we can then do is, let me go ahead and put this in here. So we're going to begin equation just like we did before. We're going to call this base, and then we're going to do p. We have the theta, and then the probability of that. I'm not going to go through the whole equation, but we can see there's Bayes' theorem. And then we can go ahead and add that in. Uh, if we go ahead and get rid of this, we don't really need it for this one. We compile it, and then get rid of the comma. The nice thing is, as we're in the equations, we're going to automatically number this for us. And then we can go ahead and go to do the next thing. Um, shifting gears now, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of R. So um, I'm not expecting you to open up R Studio. Um, don't have to worry about that at all. I'm just going to mention this as a quick way to get this, uh, to get the LaTeX code from R. And then we can go ahead and paste a table and stuff like that into this. So I'm going to open up R. And I'm going to use the Stargazer, the uh, our gazer package and get rid of that find. The nice thing is this creates a LaTeX, uh, essentially a LaTeX output. So I'm going to say, yeah, simulate me some data for X, simulate some data for, for Y, do a, a simple linear regression, and then the output of that regression is going to be put into a LaTeX. So I'm going to go ahead and do all this. And then we have all of this information here. This is our LaTeX output. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy where it says begin table. I'm going to copy all of this down. And I'm going to copy it from my output. I'm going to go back to overleaf. I'm going to put a, a new page. And I'm going to paste it. So there's a whole lot of here. It's easier to copy and paste this. I'm hoping um, I haven't tried a state of total attack. I'm hoping it's going to be the same idea from that template. Um, but it's going to be essentially, hopefully it's going to be the same process. We'll give you this LaTeX code, and then we have our nice our nice table from the output. So in theory, it should be the, the same exact thing for a statistical table. Within R, I would use Stargazer, copy, paste the output of the LaTeX code, put it in there. You can also use, there's some more formatted, like a 
GT table or G tables and some other things within R. Um, there's the Stargate package, which is really great. You can copy and paste those outputs that are LaTeX written and just copy it directly into Overleaf or into LaTeX. And it, it creates a really nice visual. Um, what we can also do is let's go ahead and now, um, before we do citations and references, um, any other uh, questions I want to check in before we switch gears and do that? Okay. Um, well, if you have questions, keep them coming and I'll try to answer them as I can as we go through this. Um, we're also going to spend some time at the end after we do the references. We're gonna, I'm going to show you some other things we can do and then we're going to open up and just kind of see what we else we, uh, stuff we can make this do. It. So um, for references, we're first going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this uh, references. And I'm going to put this as a .bib file. That way it knows specifically what we're looking for. So within this, let's say I want to now cite Douglas Adams. I'm going to put a Google Scholar. And let's do Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Click on Cite. And then I'm going to go bib text here. So again, what I did was I found my citation. Rather than using any of these, I'm going to click on bib text. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back, oops, go back into Overleaf and put that in there. Well, let's say that I also wanted to go back to Google Scholar. And let's say I wanted engine psychometric modeling by Levy and Miss Levy. So I go ahead and click on site. Bibtex, a fantastic book, highly recommend. And I can go ahead and put that in there. Uh, so I'm go ahead and I'm gonna switch back to our main text here. And oops, nope, we're actually in the workshop text. And now we can put in put another quote in here. Now, if we have a site P, and then we just going to reference, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this for now. I'm going to do slash site P. Oops. And then I'm going to choose Adam. So that's what I want, because if, as we read it, it's going to go ahead and read all of those different references. We only have two right now. Uh, we'll put Adrian is fun. And then I'm going to do slash site P. And I'll put Levy in there. So I'm going to go ahead and recompile this. And oh, it did not like it. What did it not like? So I'm not including the bibliography. Let me go ahead and check this. Ah, uh, okay. So I forgot an important thing of code in here. So I'm hoping it's going to go ahead and do stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and put this at the end, but the end document bibliography references. I'm going to go ahead and recompile this. That should make those go away. And now we have it references and it's in there too so we can also use like that's one approach we can also do this is um, oh no not again i'll do a slash site now i'm just going to do just slash site and i'll put this as atoms then it'll be compiled and then there we go. So that allows us then to go ahead and add in some citations within this. Uh, we can then, uh, if we wanted to change it so it's a different formatting within this, 
we can then go to let's see here's the whole thing about uh, references we can go through this and figure out like let's say we wanted it a different formatting way or in text we can then go ahead and go through all that information um, so let's find a quick example So there's a lot of documentations in here, um, which is great. Uh, it can get overwhelmed again, just try things, try different things and see what happens within that. So once, like, let's say we have a project all set. What we can then do is we can go ahead and let's say we're done and we can go ahead and download the PDF and call it a, a day. And then we have this, our, our PDF. And it's, yeah, it, it, it's a thing. I'll just say that. Um, what we can also do, which I like to personally do, is if you click on menu, click on source, and then what you get here is you have a zip folder. It's going to go ahead and download. I'm going to go ahead and move this. So I'm put this in my downloads. I'm going to go ahead and extract all. I'm gonna put this onto onto my desktop, and so now we have the all the LaTeX files from Overleaf. Now we have a local copy of it. So I'm going to move this over. What I can then do is, if I have like something like Mike Text installed, which again is just a local version of LaTeX. Um, where is, there's my text. I can go ahead and click on text works. And then the really nice thing is if I want to work on this offline, or customize, I can also do that too. So it has, you can, that way you're not having to rely heavily on uh, internet access. So let's say uh, you're not able to access it for some reason, that we can always kind of continue working on it. So I'm going to go back to my desktop. There's my workshop code. And now let's go ahead and put all that in there. I can go ahead and have it run. The first time I compile, it's going to take a bit of time locally. Um, but this way, if you actually, that was pretty quick. That was much quicker than I thought. But it's the same thing as Overleaf. And we have here that we can get then share and take care of it that way. Um, so that's a quick thing you can do too. Again, I like to always have a, a saved copy of things just in case. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to shift gears and I'll show you how to work with the AU thesis and dissertation templates. Um, sorry, one quick second. You want to join? Okay. Um, so it looks just, um, my son wants to join in. I hope you all don't mind. Spencer, say hi. You want to say hi? Okay. So what we're going to do now is we, I'm going to show you how to then put in the style guide. So I'm going to go back to home and we're going to create a brand new project. And I'm going to call this thesis. So we have all this information here. This is great, but you know, we're actually going to modify this heavily. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this into the chat. This is the AU thesis guide and dissertation guide uh, that was uh, created and it's maintained uh, by Dr. Alan Isaac. Um, so what we want to do is, if we scroll down here, there's two files. We want to get the AU proposal. I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this. But I'm going to go ahead and move this as a style one. So we can go ahead and put that back in. So that downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing now for this tech of the sun, this tech as well. So I'm downloading that. So now that we have that, um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Overleaf and I'm gonna upload these. So I'm gonna upload and select a file. I'm gonna go, I think it's in downloads. All right, there's the tech file. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload that. And I'm gonna go ahead and upload the style guide as well. So I'm going to go ahead and find that in the desktop. There's the style guide. Okay, there we go. I'm going to get rid of this main text because we don't need it. Uh, whenever you open a brand new project from the tech, it's going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to switch over to here. 
uh, the nice thing is here's the style guide that has all of the specific formatting aspects of this that we would want to use. If we go to uh, this example, let me go ahead and compile this. So now we can actually use this and we can customize it. So we can see, will he finish? And I can change this to my name. And let's say that we wanted to change this to my dissertation on how cats are amazing. Pass without edits, right? So then we can go ahead and we can then customize this. Um, this is just an example one as a tester, but you can take all this formatting, put this into a different tech file, and then go ahead and customize it. Uh, so as all the sections are already in there, you would want to then go ahead and create, like you'd want to edit all of this in there, but it gives you a really, really great framework to start with. So it's really, it's gonna save a lot of time and energy. I would just go ahead and always read closely, make sure there's nothing being copied over that is gonna cause issues later on. Um, but that's how you can go ahead and do a quick style thing in there too. Um, one thing I really like is um, journal statistical software. Um, I do quantitative computational work. So I love this. Uh, the nice thing here is we can go ahead and we can download the tech zip which I went ahead and go ahead put this in here, open the file. And I went ahead and I already downloaded this, but we can download it. So if you find any style guides that you like, you can download it and then go back into Overleaf. I can go ahead and create a new project. Oh, the, um, sorry, which, oh, the statistical software one? Yeah, okay, perfect, yeah. And you can put that in there. Why is this not cooperating? There we go. So about a little bit down, we have oh Spencer, don't touch the mic, please. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. We have a JSS article text zip. And this is going to have all the necessary files. So if you're using an R packet that's been documented, this is really, this is where they get the little tech files that we can use. So now that I've went ahead and I've downloaded it, I can click on, oh, you want to get down, buddy? Okay. Stay over here, okay, bud? So I'm going to call this uh, engineer IRT. Package. I'm going to create this. And then what I can then do is I can use this upload. And I'm going to go ahead and select the files. I'm going to go into this and find the JSS one. These are all the ones within there. So it has the R script, it has the visualization, everything that we need, as well as references for the file. We put all that in there and then we can just update. This is the basic version, but we can see there's a bunch of it. So we can actually see the structure of all of these. This was uh, just an example. And then we can go ahead into the, the article text. I'm gonna get rid of this main one. This is something that hopefully it gives you every time um, just from the project. But uh, from here, we can go ahead and use this article one. And we would change this to the specifics. I would change uh, the author name, uh, the affiliation. I would change the abstract. But we can see it's actually a really, really nice structure. A lot of the information we need is already in here. And we can just change out the text. Uh, it has all the equations in here. The nice thing, it also shows you how for R, we can go ahead and change the, the code. So we have the packages here. If we go down to here in the manuscript, here's our equations for Poisson regression, family Gaussian. And so here's begin code. So that's actually going to give us the R code format, which actually looks like it's in R. Uh, so this is a really nice thing if you're wanting to write this type of article that you can go ahead and utilize. Um, and that's the uh, style guide. A lot of different journals, if they accept LaTeX, they'll have the style guides. Um, something I do want to mention is 
that we've been using overlay. If you can also use LaTeX and just download this and use mic text, that's that's fine. But you can also do this with all within R. Um, so I mostly use everything within R. I'll write in an R, do all the coding within R. That way it's all within one package rather than using multiple systems. Um, this needs to be updated a bit. So it is a little bit older, but it's an articles as the name of the package. And what you can actually do is there's a bunch of different templates. So that way you can actually create a project, have it use the template from like um, IEEE, or let's say it's the American Statistical Association. There's the Journal of Statistical Software that we just pulled. We can then use that. And then we can actually use those templates. And here, the, um, the templates as well. So if we wanted like biometrics, hey, here's biometrics. We can go search for that as well. Um, so the nice thing is this is out there so we don't have to reinvent trying to get all the different formatting. Um, so that's kind of what I have for like thesis and dissertation and the style parts of this. Um, again, always make sure you download the source files that way you have it saved locally. Um, I have seen instances where overleaf has been down. Um, myself and in, in RA, we tried doing a workshop like this back in 2019, and Overleaf was down for the day. And that that made the workshop so much fun, I'll put it that way. Um, but always make sure you have a, a local copy of it saved just in case, and always the mindset, trust but verify. Um, so what we can then do, if there's questions, we can go ahead and we can try some different things. Uh, so we can pull up the, the different reference guide, uh, try things and move things around. Uh, so if you all have any questions or you want to try things, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Just let me know. And then uh, what I will say too, there is this learning curve with LaTeX. I'm, I'm still learning. I'm not an expert by any means. Um, just trial and error and uh, a lot of Google searches. Why are you practicing? I'm, I'm giving a workshop. Okay. Uh, so, uh, let me know. You're saying hi. You want to wait and say hi? Okay. Yeah, he's being shy. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions or if you want to um, try some things. I know I, I threw a whole bunch out there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's really powerful. Um, the nice thing is, again, having it be able to do this type. Oh, yeah, that's the microphone. Um, oh, one thing too. Here's uh, Let me go ahead and put this. I left. The LaTeX guide um, that my RA at the time went and created as well as the AU thesis one. This, um, you can also change the type of document from document to also, um, let's see where it is called a. Oh, no, I can't find it. Um, well, in here is also like a, a LaTeX cheat sheet that's a, a two pager that has all the different LaTeX codes in here too. Um, what we can then also do is we can use what's called Beamer Slides. So if we use um, attack Beamer Template, from this, we can actually get the presentation code within it and use that. So let's say that we want it. I don't think AU has one. So let's go ahead and just borrow. Fairfield University. Um, let's open as template. Uh, the nice thing is when I open as template, because I'm already logged into Overleaf, it went ahead and it has the document class. So rather than as an article, now it's going to be called a Beamer. And use theme, Yukon. Um, this is not Yukon. This is Fairfield. Um, I went to Yukon. <laughs> this is not Yukon. Um, so that's kind of mildly upsetting. Um, but we can go ahead and do this. We have the begin frame, end frame, and then um, my information. We can go ahead and be compile. And now we have a second one. We can start adding to that and adding information too. Um, you can also do the same thing with an R. Uh, you can actually hide the R code. That would just be the text or like a, a, a Quattro document or R markdown. Same thing. So it's, uh, if you're not an R user, 
that you don't have to learn R, you can use this. It's all personal preferences too. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Um, if there's anything you want me to kind of pull up documentation on and try. Um, the big thing is to have fun with it, try different things, and uh, keep a document of kind of what's working, what's not working, and then kind of go from there. Uh, yeah, so just let me know. Yeah, feel free to also on you if you want to. Um, do we have an AU template for presentations? I don't believe so. I don't believe we have an AU template. Um, so it, it, I have to create a thing. So I think they borrowed, they stole this one from Yukon, as I'm, that's what I'm guessing. Uh, but what you could, in theory, do is if we look at the style here. Oh, there. So it says you can, but it's actually using UC Berkeley. So they just kind of pulled. Okay. Wow. Okay. They just kind of pulled all this stuff. So we can see Berkeley. We can see let's find colors. So if we have the specific colors, we can then define the color, and then be able to import the image. So you can probably create one. Um, it's gonna be there. There's the logo. That's within this too. Um, so it's it's doable, but it's gonna be a, a bit of a lift. Hey, buddy, what you doing? Okay. Um, so unfortunately, we don't have like an AU template, but you can probably pull pull that together and kind of create one though. Um, if you do that, let me know. Happy to signal boost and mention that to folks, and because I, I think that'd be pretty cool to have one. Um, yeah, it looks like it's probably gonna be hit. You probably gonna modify a lot of stuff, but it's it might be worth it. Um, another thought too is like play around with it and try. Yeah, it looks like they just took a whole bunch of different universities and changed the color. So let me actually check um, American University um, slide deck. Oh, well, what's this? I am um, eighty templates. Oh, this is the. Uh, Okay, this is the LaTeX just for dissertations. Um, so they don't have a specific one for slides, unfortunately. That that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely would be useful. So um, if you end up modifying, let me know, and happy to spread the word about that because I think that'd be really cool. Um, let me go ahead and. Let's see. I mean, so I'm going to paste all these links here again. Um, oh, done. Happy to. Uh, so these are all the links from today as well. If you want to go ahead and try some different things, um, I'm more of, again more of an R user personally, uh, but you can also have a connect to GitHub. So I'm thinking maybe doing a, a May faculty workshop series, doing a presentation on R and GitHub, and they can probably include some more tech in there too. Looks very interesting. Um, but yeah, just let me know if you have questions. I'm going to go ahead and put my email here too. Um, so if you're using the tech, if you run into issues, um, let me know. Happy to help out. Um, again, I don't really use the on a daily basis, but always happy to do like a virtual consultation and try to figure it out too. Yeah, so just let me know. And uh, thank you all for joining today, too. Really appreciate it, and I uh, hope this was helpful.